this when you took this job, I mean, how, how anxious were you and excited to get this opportunity to come to Nebraska? Oh my gosh, you know, uh, like just being background coach. So I went 12, 13 weeks without him, without Coop, T Knight. You know, those are my guys. So once I got to be back around him, I was like, let's freaking roll. Here, what's the, what's the, the, the first month or so been like for you to you know get settled here? get back into the state of Texas, do some recruiting. Can you just kind of um, capture for us what these days have been like? Uh, drinking out of a fire hose a little bit. If you can kind of picture that. Um, no, it's been like the most rewarding part is being back around the high school coaches. Um, like, shoot, I got to see Claude Mathis, Scott Stewart, Hank Carter, dear friends of mine, mentors of mine. You guys saw like a, a tweet I put out about a week ago about High school coaches are my heroes. Well, that's like, that's true. You know, I believe in high school football. I believe in the high school experience. Eric, what, what did you get out of that experience with Carolina? Just how much did that help you the last couple of years and, and, and dealing with pro athletes and how that can help you moving forward? Right, yes, sir. Um, well, what was awesome was I dealt with guys that were a lot older than me. You know, one of the dudes I coached was Andre Roberts, who uh, he made league minimum, which, yeah, league minimum's a lot of money, but he also owned nine Zaxby's. So that was like a part-time gig for him. Um, but, no, seriously, I was around the best of the best, like DJ Moore, Baker Mayfield, LaVisca Chenault, who I actually played with or uh, played against in high school. Um, you know, like I was on the phone with DJ this morning and got to say hello uh, to his two-year-old daughter, who if you guys get a chance, go look her up on Instagram. She's two going on 25. Um, but no, I, I loved every bit of being in Carolina. Hey, Garrett, Lauren Michelson, Chandler Hughes here in Lincoln. What are some of the conversations been like with your dad throughout this transition? Um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I call him about every night. Um, just, you know, ask him for help. You know, he's his best recruiter. I tell that to everybody. You see him, he goes out on the road by himself, which, you know, there's a lot of respect behind that. And, um, I'm just always like trying to get his evaluation of me. You know, am I doing enough? Am I doing the right things? And that's what's so cool about me is like I'm a son of a coach. So I spent 18 years with best coach I know. We were under the same roof. You know, I mean, you, you know that Max. You know how close him and I are. But uh, um, so like I'll ask him about recruiting. But mainly he just keeps going. Talk to your players. Talk to their players' parents. You know if. If you guys were down there 10 minutes ago, there were six guys in my room just hanging out. And I was like, hey, guys, I got honey buns. I got Pop-Tarts. Come on, come get one. You know, just sit there, hang out with me as I'm freaking watching tape and doing all that. What's it been like for, you to, for you to get to know those guys, to get to meet those guys? And, and you know, how, do you, how do you deal with the dynamic of being the same age as your players? Or, you know, a little bit older, maybe in some cases right. even a little bit younger. What's your what's your approach to uh, you know to just tackling that situation? Mm -hmm. uh, well, what's really cool about the receiver room is we got Texas, Virginia, St. Louis, Cali, Georgia, Florida. You know we're we're all over the place, so it, it's a good group of guys. They're working really really hard, um, but you know I'm attacking it every way like I can. You know it's about relationships. I want to know what they're like. I want to know what their parents are like. You know I want to know their classes. Um, I got a big sign on my. Uh, board right now of a guy who's not doing well in school um, and every time he sees me every time I just point at the board you know so that's pretty cool it's just a reminder and like he knows I care and um, that's all that matters is uh, you know that old Nick Saban quote they don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, Andy Kendi from KTV you know some people making a big deal about how young you are to be in your position but how can that benefit you uh, work as an advantage and, and how would you respond to those that, that age is just a number? Yes sir. Um, well, you know, I, I got really lucky being around the people I've been around. Um, you talk about Joe Brady, Ben McAdoo, James Campin, uh, Matt Lombardi, Mike Sarabo, guys that really poured into me, uh, taught me from a young age of how to coach, how to treat people. Obviously, my dad and Coach Rule being the two biggest influences on me. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm probably a little bit uh, ahead of the curveball being, you know, younger. But, you know, like I said, we're just going at it.
Garrett, when you're in high school at Hill, did you know you probably wanted to get in coaching? Mm, yes, sir. So uh, in second grade, I knew I probably wouldn't be too much of a football player, and I was going right into coaching. So everything I did, um, you know, I was I was third, fourth grade. I'd sleep in the office with my dad. You know how that goes. And, um, you know, I grew up on a – you know, we did mat drills on Wednesday. I grew up playing on a wrestling mat. You know, that was my playground. So – you, how did you approach your time at Baylor? I mean, you sat in the quarterback room and kind of got to learn firsthand there. What did you learn there that you can kind of adapt here? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So what's awesome is a lot of what we're going to do on offense, um, there's carryover with everywhere I've been. And luckily, like uh, our OC, Coach Sat, obviously Coach Rule was there. Um, and then Coach Sat was in Carolina, and then he went to South Carolina, obviously, and did really good things. So, you know, right now we're – we're like uh, we're speaking in tongues, kind of. Just probably some of the other people in the room, but to us, it all makes sense. You know, we're pulling from all these offenses and the verbiage. You know, it just it hits our brain. So that's what's really been helpful. You're you're, you're a month away, or maybe a little bit over a month away, from getting to get out there on the practice field with these guys, and, and you've got after recruiting a pretty big group of receivers to work with. What do you anticipate those 15 practices in the spring are going to be like? And, and for you, what do you want to do in that period of time? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, we have this theme. We want to get 1% better. And I like to do that every single day. Um, you know, I, what, what's cool about my room is I, they're, they're hard workers and they are competitive. And you can see that on tape, you know, uh, watching some last year's tape, watching guys that have been other places, uh, whether that be other conferences or other schools. And so that standard's already set of how they want to play. And then you add our brand of football, you know, being the toughest, hardest working, most competitive team in the country. That's kind of what I want to look like in April. Garrett, uh, Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Yes, sir. Uh, what's, what's it like having an old teammate here, Josh Flakes, as your that guy in your position group now? What's, what's that dynamic? Like? Um, he's not only an old teammate, he's a good friend. You know, we, we used to hang out together. Uh, first touchdown pass I ever threw in high school was to him. Uh, but, you know, like he was sitting there in, in my office. He was one of those uh, six, seven guys down there. He was just ta asking about his son, asking about his dad. Uh, I went to school with his older brother. Uh, so we're really, really close. Uh, what's cool, though, is like, you know, when we were at, uh, at Baylor, you know, when we were installing the offense, him and I went through a few different coordinators together and a few different systems. So, you know, teaching him and I, he's got a lot of respect for kind of the way we teach. So, you know, it's good. Same. Kind of same way for him. He's got some of the same verbiage carryover for him. You guys added another transfer in Billy Kemp. Mm -hmm. um, just for what he did at Virginia. What do you know about Billy? What what attracted you guys to Billy to bring him in mm -hmm. as a as a one year transfer guy? Yes, sir. So uh, Billy, you know, being around him, he, he's a vet of the group. You know, he sees a lot of things. Uh, obviously, this being what his fifth, sixth year, I think. Um, but he's a freaking worker, and that's what he's setting the standard of the room of how we want to work whether that's mat drills, doing the extra, doing the jugs. But, you know, uh, that's the whole group. Seriously, that's the ethos of that group right now. It's just their work ethic. I've been so impressed with that. Evan Cooper said you guys get up a workout at like 4.30 or something. Is that right? So I figured that would come up. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest, guys. He's beat me in the last two days, and it's kind of ticked me off. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're working in there at about uh, 4.30. Um, he's on a different program than with me. I was doing squats this morning. He's doing curls. I got to get on that one to look like him. Can you just talk though about how you you drive each other? I know um, Coach Rule said it's not to compete against each other necessarily, but you can drive each other to, to be better and just have that relationship work. Right. Uh, so one of my favorite things about coaches, you know, uh, you know how you tape your ankles, like you know you're going to practice. You got to tape your ankles as a coach when you're with him. You got to get ready to go. You know, buckle up because he's gonna he'll challenge you. You know, and he likes the confrontation, and we all do. Um, so we're competing with each other. You know, when those DBs and receivers go one on one, shoot, I wouldn't be surprised if me and Coop go one on one. You said that that Coach Rule and your dad are the two biggest coaching influences in your life. Obviously, it's easy to understand why your dad would be in that position. Um, you spent less time at Baylor with Coach Rule. Mm -hmm. Can you explain? what you took from him during that time and, and how he became such an important influence for you? Mm -hmm. uh, so the first time I met Coach, uh, he came 
uh, spent the night over him. My dad were recruiting Dallas. I stayed up all night just trying to meet this guy. You know, I've heard so much about him. Um, but seriously, um, you know, we have a process. Um, and I believe in our process because I was a part of it. I saw it work. You know, I trust it. You know, you'll see us say trust the process, OOU, all that stuff. Um, but everything I do, the way I talk, walk, act, uh, that's, that's Coach Rule's DNA in reality. Questions, guys? Coach, what does the OOU mean one of us? What does that mean to you? Um, you know, it's just a select group, right? You know, you uh, you kind of lay down for the brand, right? So uh, we got a lot of guys that have had, have had a lot of opportunities to go elsewhere, and but like this is where they want to be. You know, they want to be around this family. Um, that's kind of my, my favorite part about uh, – being with Coach Rule is like, I like seeing Vivian Leona run up and down the halls, you know. Uh, my favorite person in the building is actually Terrence Knight and son, Jameer. Um, I'd love to go watch him play basketball whenever I can get out of here, but uh, no, that that's just one of us, you know. We, we have a brand and uh, that OOU shows up kind of every morning. Eric, Kevin Suits with Channel 10 here in town. Some of your uh, colleagues and the new coaches on staff have talked about their memories of Nebraska. Clearly, they remember the 90s. What are your recollections of Nebraska football and how closely have you watched this program from afar, if at all? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, uh, obviously, wasn't wasn't around in the 90s, guys. I know uh, I'm a young guy. Um, but uh, I am a 90s baby. I'm 99, so I count. Um, but honestly, my first memory is Colt McCoy versus Indomitian Sioux, you know, in the Big 12 title game, because um, that was kind of a, a heartbreaker, obviously. But... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Big 12 Rays kind of just being from that area. So obviously watched them, watched Coach Pelini, uh, kept close with Coach Frost. And, uh, you know, he had some guys on staff that I'm close friends with. So, you know, obviously always kept up with Nebraska football. What's the reception been like? It, it feels like Nebraska's making headways in Texas big time recruiting. But what, what have you felt just like in the halls or, you know, in those visits? Right. Uh, well, you know, we, we hired so many Texas guys. And then obviously we, we hit a home run with Dr. Elza. And the waves of Dr. Elza, you know, has really hit the THSEA. But just uh, Coach Roy has earned and gained so much respect there um, because of, you know, how good he was and how he did it the right way at Baylor. And then not only that, like, shoot, one of the greatest coaches of all time is D.W. Rutledge, who was at Converse Judson. Well, shoot, he visited us in, in Carolina. You know, so that kind of goes to show the relationship not only he had, but just kept throughout, you know, ever since he was at Baylor. Okay. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys.